Hello, it's Reverend Jo. It's really good to see you. I hope you're all very well. Let's light our candle as we begin our worship. Oh, it's lit already. There we go. So there we are. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. In our story today, we're going to continue in the book of Acts. The book of Acts comes after the four Gospels in the New Testament. It's written by the person who wrote the Gospel of Luke. It's kind of Luke part two. And we've been hearing stories of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. And we heard a couple of weeks ago about Peter and John healing at the beautiful gate. And if you read any of the book of Acts, it's about the things that the disciples did with the power of the Holy Spirit once Jesus had ascended to heaven and is back with his father, God the Father. So this is about the disciples doing the work of telling people about God. And our story today is not about one of those disciples who Jesus knew and was trained by him. It's about a new disciple, a chap called Paul. Well, actually, he wasn't called Paul at the beginning. He was called Saul. And part of his transformation experience meant that his name was changed from Saul to Paul. And actually, that happened to a number of the disciples. Something about following Jesus made them change their names because Peter, who we uh, talk about and we heard about in our story a couple of weeks ago, he was called Simon originally. Uh, so they changed his name to Peter to mean the rock uh, that Jesus was going to build his church in on. So our story today is about changing your mind, about being completely having to change your whole life and your mind around and go in a completely different direction. It's quite a long story today. It's from our Lion Storyteller Bible. So feel free, settle down and listen carefully as I read the story to you. So this is about Saul who became Paul called On the Road to Damascus. Saul did not like Jesus, not at all. He'd never met Jesus, but he was friendly with the religious leaders who'd helped put Jesus to death. And if they said Jesus was bad, then that was good enough for him. Saul didn't like the people who followed Jesus either, not one bit. When they said that Jesus was God's son and that he'd come back from the dead, it made Saul angry, for he knew that he had tried to do his best for God and that such things just weren't possible. So when the people who didn't like Jesus started throwing stones at Stephen, who was one of Jesus' followers, Saul just stood and watched. He didn't try to stop them. He didn't say, that's wrong. He just held their coats until poor Stephen was dead. Saul did not like Jesus. No, not at all. So he travelled up and down the country, arresting Jesus's followers, throwing them into prison and putting them to death. The followers of Jesus were afraid, so some of, some of them ran away, ran far away into other countries. But that didn't stop Saul. No, nope, not for one minute. When he heard that they had fled to the city of Damascus, he gathered his friends together and set off to arrest them. Saul did not like Jesus. No, not at all. But Jesus liked Saul. So as Saul hurried along the road to Damascus, Jesus went to meet him. He came to Saul in a vision with a blinding flash of light so powerful that Saul fell to his knees. Saul said Jesus. Saul, why don't you like me? Saul was confused. He had no idea what had happened and who was talking to him. So he asked, who are you? And when the answer came, Saul trembled with fear. I am Jesus, said the voice in the light. You've been hurting my friends. And when you do that, you hurt me. Now here's what I want you to do. Get up and go to Damascus just as you planned. I will send a messenger to tell you what you must do. Saul got up, 
But when he opened his eyes, he could not see. So his friends took him by the hand <coughs> and led him into Damascus. And there he waited for three days, not eating or drinking a thing. Meanwhile, Jesus spoke to one of his friends in Damascus, a man named Ananias. Ananias, Jesus said, go to Straight Street. A man named Saul is staying there. He's blind and I want you to heal him. Saul, cried Aeneas, but he's the one who's been arresting your followers and putting them to death. He doesn't like you, not at all. I know, said Jesus, but I like Saul and I have plans for him. I'm going to send him round the world to tell people everywhere all about me. So Ananias went. He laid his hands on Saul and once again Saul could see. What is more, Saul decided there and then to follow Jesus too. He was baptised, filled with the Holy Spirit and to show that he was a new person, he even took a new name. You can call me Paul from now on, he said. And Paul never grew tired of telling people that the man he hadn't liked, liked him anyway and had given him another chance. He never grew tired of talking about Jesus. No, not at all. And there we've got the picture of Saul on the road to Damascus, blinded by the light that was Jesus. We're going to have our time of reflection now, so you can switch the video off in a moment and talk in your class, or you can watch our music and pictures and then come back and talk with me uh, on the video afterwards. But as you switch off or as you think, just have a think. Have you ever had to change your mind that much, just like Saul did when he became Paul? See you again in a moment. what a story eh? Someone who absolutely hated Jesus, hated him so much that he killed his followers and persecuted them and arrested them, had this amazing experience, a blinding light so bright he couldn't see and a voice Jesus speaking to him, telling him that he was Jesus and asking him to stop persecuting his friends. What an amazing experience that must have been. It must have been terrifying to have to completely change your mind about something, to go from hating to loving in just a couple of days. It's a really big change in his life. I wonder what values you see in this story. I wonder if some of the values that your school holds are in this story. Perhaps just have a little chat to the person next to you about what values you see. I think this is a story about forgiveness, about Jesus forgiving Saul for being so unkind. It's a story about love. And it's a story about courage too. Because Paul, or Saul as he was, had to be so brave to admit that he was wrong and to change his mind and to change his mind in such a huge way from going to hating Jesus and his followers to loving Jesus and telling other people about him. It's such a huge change around. I wonder, have you ever had to change your mind like that? How did it feel to suddenly discover that actually you were wrong about something? 
or you'd made a mistake. It can be really hard sometimes, can't it, to admit when we've done something wrong. Admit that we made the wrong decision or we thought something that now we've changed our mind on. But actually it shows real courage, real honesty, real love, real forgiveness to be able to say, I mucked up, I got it wrong, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have thought like that. Because actually now I think something different. I wonder if you've got the courage to admit when you're wrong and to ask people to help you when you need to change your mind about something. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, just like Paul did. He was filled with the Holy Spirit at his baptism. And that's what gave him the courage and the energy and the love to be able to tell other people about Jesus and to admit that he was wrong. I think we need that same Holy Spirit in our lives to be as brave as Paul was and to say when we're wrong and to say sorry when we have to and admit when we need to change our minds. So shall we pray? For that gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God, sometimes we muck up and we get things wrong and we're unkind or we do things badly or we just make a bad decision. Help us to admit when we've mucked up, when we've got it wrong. Help us to have the courage to say sorry, to change our minds. Help us to be brave like Paul was and choose a new way of living. Give us your Holy Spirit to help us live better. Amen. So there's my challenge to you. When you get something wrong in the next few days, be brave and admit when you've mucked up and ask for forgiveness and go in a different direction. Take care, see you soon and uh, have a lovely time in the sunshine. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.